This video covers the probability section of the mathematics um, syllabus. So, in understanding probability, it's important to understand how you can illustrate probability in your answers. And there are two main methods in core maths, either through the use um, of a tree diagram or something like this, which is known as a Venn diagram. If we look at a tree diagram and take this example of tossing a coin, so there are two um, possible outcomes when you toss a coin. Obviously, either you get heads or you get tails. So you have a one out of two chance of getting a head and a, and a, or a one out of two chance of getting a tail. Then what a tree diagram basically does is it allows you to easily calculate the probability if you're tossing that coin more than once. So, so the first time you toss the coin, you either have a probability of getting a head or a tail. But then the second time you toss the coin, you could have either got a head on your first choice and then either get a head or a tail. Or you could have got a tail on your first um, toss and then you go for a head or a tail on your second toss. And basically, so if a question, for example, says calculate the probability that on both tosses um, you get a head. So then you'll, be base, you'll basically look for where two um, H's are occurring because that means that two heads, two tossing of heads are occurring in a row. And what you do, as it says here, you multiply along the branch to find the probability. So you take 1 over 2, multiply it by 1 over 2, which gives you 1, up, 1 over 4. And what that means in, in words is that in order to, you have a 1 in 4 chance of getting a head on both tosses if you do two tosses, if that makes sense. Then some basic laws around um, conditional probability. First of all, what's important to note is this formula, very important. Probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus by the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. All right. So when looking at the laws, there are, let me quickly check, there are six main laws that we will be looking at. First of all, um, inclusive events. This is where the probability of A and B does not equal zero. So basically on your Venn diagram, there is an intersection. As you can see here, there's an intersection between event A and event B. Seven is in the intersection. Then a mutually exclusive event is when the probability of A and B is equal to zero, meaning there's no intersection. So it's basically the opposite of an inclusive um, event. That means that your two um, event circles in your Venn diagram are not overlapping and there's no intersection. Then if we look at exhaustive events, uh, this is where the probability of A or B um, is equal to 1, uh, contains all the elements. And essentially what this is saying in simple English is that no matter what you do, you will always, there's a 100% probability that you will either get A or B simply meaning that there's no, if you come to a, an example like this, there is no probability of getting an event occurring um, outside of A or B, such as these 13 of uh, 4, which is outside of A and B. And just going back to here, so as you can see in these two Venn diagrams, they can either be um, mutually exclusive um, or uh, inclusive events but there's no numbers or no probability um, numbers on the outside of the circles, uh, which, are, which would simply mean that um, you have a 100% probability of either getting A or B. Then complementary events. Um, these are events that are mutually exclusive and exhaustive events. Um, the probability of A plus by the probability of B is always equal to 1. So basically, if we analyze this first part, mutually exclusive, coming back to this, this just means that there's no intersection as shown here. Exhaustive, if we come back to here, this just means in simple English that there's no numbers or probability on the outside of your Venn diagram. So you would end up with an example like this. Um, 
And then if we go to the fifth um, basic law, not non-complementary events, this means that not A um, does, not, does not equal um, B. So uh, just a quick bit of notation to illustrate not A is simply an A with a little apostrophe above it. And what this is basically saying is that there is a probability of, of choosing something or getting something that is not either A or B, it's given by these uh, 13 and 4, those two numbers. So if you look at this directly, not A does not equal B. So where, where in this diagram do we experience not A? You, either can, you can either select something of B or you can select these numbers on the outside. Both of these um, sort of events um, are not A. However, if we look at B, B is only within the circle, so that means that not A will not be equal to B, if that makes sense. That is a bit confusing. Then, if you look at independent events, simple formula for this is that probability of A and B, so the intersection between um, circles in a Venn diagram, is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Um, and then just a quick bit of notation. Probability of A and then like an N sort of thing, B means probability of A and B. Probability of A and then a U sort of symbol and um, or B, uh, that U symbol is symbolic of um, or. And then just another bit of notation, probability of A is the probability of A and the probability plus by the probability of A and B. So what that basically means, let me just find an example. When you have um, overlapping circles, if A is on your left and B is on your right, then the probability of A is this left-hand circle up until this line, as well as that 8, which is extending into B, because it still falls part of A. Then, um, And obviously vice versa for the probability of B being probability of B plus by the probability of A and B. Um, that concludes the video for the conditional probability section in the math syllabus.